In this video, we'll show how to create a dynamic speedometer within DaVinci Fusion. You can use this to overlay speed data or other metrics from GoPro or other action cameras, or really any external telemetry data that you'd like to put on top of your videos. Let's start by creating a Fusion clip, adding it to the timeline, and going to the Fusion page. We'll start by making the outside diameter of the speedometer. We'll be using shapes, so we'll need both the ellipse and the render to get started. We'll uncheck the solid box and adjust the border radius to our liking. You can go ahead and also pick your favorite color. First, we'll do some cleanup and make sure things are named so it's consistent throughout the project. Since we have multiple shapes, we'll bring out a merge, we'll name it to keep things consistent, and then we'll connect the rectangle to the merge. Next, we'll resize the rectangle down to what will become the larger dash. This will go around the diameter of the ring and indicate our larger speed changes. Now adjust the Y offset to move it to where it's on the edge of the circle, but of course, without overlap on the outside of the ring. You can also go ahead and set your favorite color. Now we'll add the duplicate node. This will allow us to increase copies going around the ring, but we'll need to set the angle mode to absolute and then adjust the rotation. So to do this by hand, we'll want to use uh, an expression of 360 divided by copies plus one, which will give us an equal distance around the ring. You should think about how many increments you want on the speedometer. For now, we'll set it to something, but we'll come back and refine this once we have a better idea of how we want this to look. Now we'll make the smaller dashes with another rectangle. We'll use an expression to keep the same width and an expression to make it half the height of the larger dashes. We'll also use an expression on the Y offset so that we put it in the same location as the large dashes. We're trying to keep as much as possible tied to expressions and math values instead of doing it by hand. We'll add a duplicate node as well, and we will use an expression to keep the same number of copies as the large dashes. But what you'll see here is that they're not visible because they're being spaced identical to the large dashes. To offset the small dashes, we'll add a transform node, and then we'll tie an expression between the rotation of the transform to the actual angle from the other dashes. This way, as we change copies, it will automatically adjust the rotation and keep things consistent. A bit of a tip, if you don't remember the variable name, you can always pin another node and then drag down with the mouse to get the variable name. You can also see in the bottom left when hovering over, what is the variable name of any given configuration item. Now we can see we have a gap since we use the same Y offsite, but we have a shorter height. So we'll adjust that expression to compensate for that height. Now we'll start building the dial that will spin around. We'll start by making the center. So this will be a circle in the very center of the speedometer. We'll connect the width and the height of an expression to make this easy. And then in our case, we will color it black. To make the dial, we'll bring down another ellipse. We'll connect to the center, which will generate a merge node. We'll adjust this until it looks nice, and then change the color to our preferred color. Rotating either object does not give us the effect we want. So to solve this, we will bring in another transform node, which will then allow us to rotate the entire object. Now we have a dial that we're able to change the location by setting this rotation. Later, we'll connect this to actual dynamic data so that as the video plays, it correctly sets the dial. Adding the numbers is a manual process. So before we do that, we want to set the final number of large and small marks. In my case, I will need 11 copies or in total 12 large marks to achieve the speedometer I'm after. Unfortunately, I couldn't think of an expression or mathematic or automated way to generate the numbers around the speedometer. So we will just create individual, place them, and create several merges and text objects to create the effect that we like. If somebody knows a expression-based or leveraging the duplicate node or a clever way to do this, I'd be very curious. Now we have all of our numbers in place. So we'll just group these together and name them just to get them out of the way, since we won't be changing these again. Now we have a working speedometer. We can adjust the rotation, and we have an actual speed. For the speed information, we'll be using the flight log from my remote control helicopter. It logs the time and the speed during a flight, and you're able to export this into a CSV format. 
could do something similar, pulling the GPS data out of a GoPro, or really any data source that gives you some sort of timestamp and some sort of speed. Let's take a quick look at the CSV. Nothing special, just a semicolon delimited CSV. We'll rename this into something a bit more friendly since we'll be working with it. And we'll go ahead and create a new Python script to begin parsing and generating a format that we can use in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve has a node that allows you to read a JSON file, and then you can do a lookup based off of a key. So we'll start by creating a Python script to read the CSV file and create a JSON file that we can read in DaVinci Resolve. We need to find a key that we can translate within DaVinci Resolve. It's not surprising that DaVinci Resolve cannot read an actual date and a time of day. So we'll convert this to seconds within the file itself. So the file will start at zero seconds and then the final time will be a second value. This will give us something in theory that we'll be able to translate within DaVinci Resolve and do consistent lookups. We will also write logic within DaVinci Resolve, but in my opinion, it's better to minimize your complexity of code within DaVinci and instead focus here to provide a complete data set. So every single time DaVinci attempts to do a lookup, it will get a successful response. In this case, the CSV file has multiple entries per second, but it does not go beyond the one second level of granularity. I've decided to make this become one second, 1 1.5 to 2.5, which means DaVinci will ultimately check on those intervals so that also means I need to make sure that the data set has an entry for every single one of those half second marks. Otherwise, we will either need to have error handling and DaVinci Resolve, or we will have a bunch of errors occurring within the console log. Now we have something good enough to begin testing with. You might notice there's a couple of things missing, but we'll come back to those later. Take a quick look at it, and then we'll go back into DaVinci Resolve. We'll bring down two nodes. First one is a JSON from file. This is where we will specify the file that we just created. But then we'll also use the JSON git, which allows us to set a key telling DaVinci Resolve to fetch from the JSON file with that key value. And then the output is the value in the JSON file. Debugging in DaVinci can be a bit tricky. Sometimes you get error messages in console. Sometimes you have just a kind of a silent failure where things don't continue. So I like to use a text node to kind of work to make sure that I've got the right logic, getting consistent responses. I've also noticed you need to have the node in focus, either putting it on your left screen or highlighted or something. So I tend to write a lot of print statements just to make sure that things are actually happening. Um, otherwise, you can spend quite a bit of time changing stuff only to realize it was never being executed. Now that we have the text node connected, we will set the key to the time variable. This is the current frame from DaVinci Resolve. This will immediately start getting us error messages since that is not the keys that we're using in our JSON file. This will never give us a successful value since the frame is never a float, but all of our time variables have a decimal point. So we will never get a successful key value lookup from this node and have constant error messages in the console. Since time is our current frame, we are also able to get the frame rate of the timeline as available as well. We can then divide time, or in this case, current frame number, by frame rate, and that will give us the second to a decimal point where we are in the playback. This will start giving us usually a very long float, so we'll readjust that string to only show us one spot after the decimal. Now, if we divide by 0.5 and ask for the remainder, any time that we have a remainder of zero, will either be zero, 0 0.5, one, 1 1.5, so on and so forth, which is the frames that we should do a lookup to get the current speed value from our JSON file. I tend to make if statements with print statements, and then after I know the logic is working correctly, I'll go back in, remove the print statements, and put in my intended behavior. I also make a lot of typos, so this tends to save me quite a bit of debug time. Speaking of debug, getting a lot of error messages. I'm not quite sure why. Is it not being set? Is it how I'm setting it? So let's wrap this in print statements and do some debug to see what's going on. This node's being called every frame. 
and if there was no key set, you get an error message. So we will say the last key that we set that met our if statement. And if our if statement is not met, we will reuse that previous key. Now we tie this back to the text box and we should have a number representing the value in the JSON file. If we scrub back and forth on the timeline, unfortunately we got some error messages. If we go look at the JSON, we'll see there's actually not a key in the JSON file. If you go back and look at the CSV, we'll see that not every second had two entries, which means we did not generate two entries per second, which resulted in gaps in our data set. We could try to solve this in event resolve with additional logic and complexity. In my opinion, it's better to make a perfect data set for DaVinci Resolve, so we'll create a function to fill in the gaps. Now we'll have a JSON file with an entry for every half second for the duration of the CSV file. This should give us a consistent set of results with an event resolve without any errors generating in the console. We'll generate a new JSON file, and then we'll go back into DaVinci Resolve. At first, it did not appear to fix the problem. We still had the error messages. Went back and double checked the JSON file. Then of course, remembered, anytime you change the JSON file, you need to click the reload button on the JSON git node. Now if we move back and forth in the timeline, we do not generate any sort of errors in the console log. Now we'll move that text node over and attach it in, and this will become our center number on the dial showing the current speed. Now to fix the dial, we can see that 60 is 180 degrees within the circle, which tells us we just need to multiply our speed by three, and that will put us in the correct spot on the dial. So we'll grab that output, multiply by, by three, and we should be good. We're on the opposite side of the 60. So we'll just change this to be a negative, and that should pop us on the other side. And voila, we have a working speedometer. Now it's just clean up. If you want to have KPH underneath the number, if you want to move it, offset it, change size, this is really just cosmetics at this point. The underlying logic and code is complete. Now you can bring in your original clip on the timeline, use the transform command to resize and place the speedometer wherever you would like. If you want to reuse this for multiple videos, you can actually go in, highlight everything, and create a macro. You want to make sure that you export the media out output as well as setting the file for the JSON git file. You can then open with Infusion the video itself and add the actual macro, tie it in with the merge node, and then you can place it with Infusion. In theory, you could also now use planar tracker or other things to sticky this where you want. And that's it. A fully working dynamic speedometer powered by a JSON file. Hopefully it's useful to a few people out there. I know it's not the typical way to animate something with Infusion, and I definitely don't have a clue what I'm doing with video editing, but it was fun to do. Enjoy.